Hey guys, and welcome to a new show on the channel called Rogue Minute, where we take a few gaming topics, break them down, just have a discussion. This will be a fun episode, episode one. Now, we do focus on roguelikes here, but we're not opposed to, you know, talking about different things on the channel. Today, I thought it'd be a good idea to bring up a couple of topics that have really, uh, I don't know, not been bothering me necessarily, but have been sort of issues that I've come across with some of the roguelikes that we've been playing on the channel. First and foremost, the first topic here I want to talk about is controller support. Now, I understand if a game doesn't have, you know, full controller support and it advertises itself as such on Steam. That's totally fine. However, what I've been finding lately is that there are plenty of games, especially roguelikes, that say they have full controller support on Steam. However, this is obviously a lie because controller support is completely balked in some of these games. Now... Notably, in one game we covered, uh, Ruined Dog doesn't even have the option to invert the camera when you're using a controller. Now, this is like basic, you know, controller support 101 type stuff, invert uh, Y axis. Now, they have since added it in a patch, uh, which is great, but they launched without it. So th that's the sort of, sort of thing I'm talking about. But, but the bigger issue is the, the menus. I just don't understand from a technical perspective how you can get a controller to work basically flawlessly in moment to moment gameplay, but in the menus, it doesn't work properly and bugs out. So I'm just not sure like, what is going on here from a technical perspective, but from a gamer perspective, it's really frustrating for when you, <laughs> you just want to press down on a menu to go down and it goes left, or you want to press down on a menu and it doesn't move at all. Like why? I don't understand. But the part about it that frustrates me is you say on your Steam, you know, store page, full controller support, which is obviously not 100% true. But anyway, the Steam API exists, which is really, really awesome. Uh, I've, I used that in Ruined Dog uh, before they patched it, so that's awesome. Uh, what a great tool that exists, the Steam API. Uh, I've never really used it until that Ruined Dog uh, review that I wanted to do. Um, yeah, it works flawlessly. So kudos to Steam, you know, another great community feature or just like feature in general on there. Uh, but yeah, so controller support in menus or in games in general, but in menus, especially when your game is listed as full controller support, it's a big, big, big first topic that I wanted to talk about. Now, the second topic here is 1.0 releases with no content, or I should, I should clar clarify 1.0 releases with slim content or very little content. Now, I think, I mean, Ruined Dog is an interesting example as it only has three three levels, but the other one we covered on the channel was uh, Heavy uh, Storm Shadow, which not only does it have only three levels, the three levels are basically identical. I mean, they play almost, almost identically aside from the random weather effects. Um... I don't know, you you release a, a, a game into 1.0 and I don't know if you want me to grind 20 to 50 hours of your currency and all this stuff, but you only provide three basic levels. Now, Ruined Dog, at least the levels are quite unique. Uh, each of the three main levels play differently, have different objectives and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, with the <laughs> Heavy Storm Shadow, man... Those three levels are basically exactly the same, and they ask you to grind over and over and over again. Um, now, uh, in contrast, something like, you know, Death Must Die, it's in early access. It only has two acts. So there are two main levels, but it, f it feels more robust because of the gear system, the progression system, the skill trees... Um, and the general re replayability doesn't feel quite as, I don't know, lim limiting. Um, but that's more to do with the game systems. The, the levels themselves, there's still only two, two main levels. But the thing is that game advertises itself as early access, right? I think uh, Deep Rock Galactic Survivors is another interesting one that only released with a couple of biomes. I, c I can't remember if it was only one on, on release. Um... But they've since added at least another one, which is cool. Uh, but again, that game, early access. So this is this is an interesting sort of topic to bring up too. Early access versus 1.0. You know, are your expectations wildly different for early access versus 1.0? Because mine are. Like when I hear a game is coming out into early access, 
I don't think it's going to have, you know, be totally content and feature complete right from day one. A lot of these games are promising free future updates, uh, which is cool. Um, but when you're only launching in, in 1.0 with three levels and I have to wait a month or two for a fourth level, it, it feels a bit slim. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Let me, get, let me know. Do you guys mind when a 1.0 comes out and is already, uh, announcing free content? If the content in the 1.0 release is kind of weak, like, is that okay? Or does that turn you off? Uh, and I think the expectations thing is an interesting sort of one to bring up here because I don't know if I'm going to pay, you know, a hundred Australian dollars for a brand new game. I expect it to be feature complete without bugs. If I pay $8 for an early access game on Steam, my expectations are pretty, pretty different. You know what I mean? But all right, that'll just about do it for episode one here of Rogue Minute. Thanks everyone who's tuning in. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see for future episodes, different topics, different discussions, anything like that, let me know. Uh, please consider hitting like and subscribe to help our channel grow. Thank you very much, and I hope you have an amazing, fantastic day.